Unless you've been completely out of the loop or living under a rock or you simply just don't care, the number one topic of discussion throughout social media and even at work has been the collapse of a bank called the Silicon Valley Bank. I decided to make this video to explain in layman's terms exactly what happened. I also want to tell you just how serious the situation was, how the government intends to help the clients of these banks get their money back, and how does any of this affect American taxpayers. It's the largest bank meltdown since the Great Recession more than a decade ago. A rough week for the banking industry. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The second biggest bank collapse in U.S. history. Many of these Silicon Valley startups risk collapse. All our cash was at uh, SVB. For the collapse of this Silicon Valley Bank, is this going to cause a financial meltdown? If the bank is taken over by FDIC, the people running the bank should not work there anymore. So first and foremost, what exactly is Silicon Valley Bank? Well, Silicon Valley Bank was a strong and very reputable bank that's been around the block since 1983. And it established a reputation for helping entrepreneurs in the tech field help fund their business. Put it like this. If you were starting a tech company and you needed funds to get it off the ground or to expand your business, you would have a very hard time getting financial assistance from traditional banks mostly due to the fact that your business would be considered a huge risk because you don't quite have a profitable track record yet. But this is exactly what Silicon Valley Bank specializes in. This bank specializes in providing banking and financial services to technology and life science startup companies. Therefore, this bank will finance your startup company. And honestly, there are no other banks in comparison. Silicon Valley Bank was the 16th largest financial bank in the United States. And it got that big because since the 80s, several startup companies it financially supported became extremely successful. Look, side note, not to insult anybody's intelligence, but for those who have no idea what Silicon Valley is, it's the Southern San Francisco Bay Area of California, which is known for innovation and super technology. To put things into perspective, the Silicon Valley is home to the headquarters of many of the world's largest high-tech corporations, uh, including more than 30 businesses in the Fortune 1000, such as uh, Apple, Meta, uh, Google, as well as thousands of other promising startup companies. It's basically the tech hub of the world and it's in Silicon Valley in California. Okay, I just want to make sure that we were all on the same page. So uh, let's get back to Silicon Valley Bank. So how does a very reputable bank like Silicon Valley Bank collapse? You know, people say that hindsight is 2020, and I'm sure that the senior leadership at the bank can all agree that they made a very, um, for a lack of better words, a stupid mistake. You see, back in 2020, when the pandemic was full force and people stayed at home, several startup companies emerged and investors and venture capital firms from all around the world were throwing hundreds of millions of dollars left and right to these startup tech companies. Shut up and take my money. These companies needed to put all of that money somewhere and guess where they put it? at Silicon Valley Bank. Now, you have to keep in mind that banks have to make money too, right? They have to be able to generate enough revenue to cover their expenses and to maintain an adequate level of capital to meet regulatory requirements. And that's where net interest margin comes into play. Stay with me. Let me break it down in layman's terms for you. When you put money in a bank, the bank loans the money out to customers and in return, the bank earns interest profit. The bank also uses your money to generate profits through trading and investment activities like stocks and real estate. Again, profit. Now, when the bank subtracts its bills like employee salary, utility bills, and maybe even rent from the profit that they made, that's kind of like the net interest margin. I guess I could have just said uh, banks make money off of your money in order to pay bills stay in business and to expand. So Silicon Valley had all of these deposits, cash from startup companies, and they had to do something with it 
in order to keep the investors and shareholders of their company happy. You have to remember that Silicon Valley Bank itself is a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ stock exchange. If it's not making money, it's not making its investors happy. So the powers that be at Silicon Valley Bank decided to put tens of billions of dollars into 10 year treasury bonds and government backed mortgage securities. Now that's usually considered a very safe and conservative investment, but there's two problems. The problem with this kind of investment is that the money is locked up for 10 solid years, meaning for 10 years, it can't be touched. And the other problem is that whenever interest rates rise, the value of bonds that you've already purchased falls. Well, as we all know, the Federal Reserve has been hiking interest rates since last March in order to fight inflation. Although inflation has been moderating in recent months, the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go. As I mentioned, the latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be, to be higher than previously anticipated. The leadership didn't expect for the economy to take such a drastic turn, but golly, they locked up billions of dollars for 10 years in bonds that was losing value. So in other words, if the majority of the bank's customers wanted to, for some reason, withdraw all of their money, the bank wouldn't be able to support the request because all of the money was tied up. To make matters worse, all the hype and money from venture funding and capitalists dried up. So startup companies were no longer getting money from venture capitalist companies. So they slowly began to withdraw their own money from the bank. Before you know it, the withdrawals were occurring a lot quicker than the bank anticipated. Look. Technology is advancing every day and with advanced technology, we can communicate with one another at lightning speed compared to how we communicated and shared news back in 2008. In this case, on March 8th, the bank announced that it was going to start selling stock and raise new cash because of the issue it was facing with the bonds that it invested in. Now, if I was a company owner and I kept my cash in Silicon Valley Bank, this announcement would definitely raise an eyebrow because it almost sounds identical to what the Lehman Brothers did back in September of 2008. When Lehman Brothers got in trouble, the thinking was just let it fail. That was an enormous shock to the system. Others were in trouble as well. One by one, we learned that major financial institutions, some of the largest lenders in America, had made bad loans, bundled them into securities that were virtually worthless, insured them with companies that couldn't stand behind the insurance, and in the end, the federal government had bailed them out because we need these big banks to keep the economy going. It turns out that many other companies thought the same exact way. Several venture capitalists began to tell their companies to move money out of the Silicon Valley Bank, and many employees and executives used Twitter and WhatsApp to tell associates and friends to withdraw all of their money as soon as possible. It was one of those situations where you took action immediately and then asked questions later because you believe all of your money is at stake. So what we did yesterday, we we're in numerous early stage companies uh, and sitting, I sit on the board of a couple of them. And the first call was get the money out. And some of the resistance was, well, you know, they'll survive this, then they'll remember that we weren't there for them. And I said, you're not hearing me, get the money out, you know. You're, and, and there was no resistance after that because it's not worth betting your company on. So needless to say, panic spread quickly and companies were withdrawing their funds expeditiously to the point that the FDIC had to step in. The hysteria was so intense that customers at other banks began to withdraw their cash as well, which ultimately led to the collapse of Signature Bank. This is the third largest bank closure in U.S. history. To some extent, this is uh, part of the panic surrounding the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, which has left many small and mid-sized banks like Signature Bank vulnerable to bank <laughs> runs. But Now, this is what you call a run on a bank. It's a term used to indicate that there's a large number of companies or people withdrawing their money within a short period of time. And that's exactly what happened in this scenario. Story, people lined up early this morning to get their money out of the now defunct Silicon Valley Bank. This was the scene outside the main branch in Santa Clara. SVB is one of two banks to fail within days of each other. Now comes the finger pointing and the lawsuits. So 
who's to blame? This was a mixture of a lot of things that coincidentally happened at the same exact time. Yes, Silicon Valley Bank made a terrible mistake investing so much of its balance sheet into securities that couldn't be touched for years. But then again, the bank had no idea that the Federal Reserve was going to start hiking interest rates so quickly. The bank thought they were doing the right thing by announcing that they had an issue and was going to raise some cash to counter the mistake, but that eventually backfired on them as well. Panic spread at lightning speed through the help of social media, and when you mix all of that together, you pretty much got the perfect storm. So the next question is, whose money are they going to use to bail everyone out? Well, President Biden assured the American people that no American taxpayer's money would be used. No losses will be, and I'm, this is an important point, no losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Let me repeat that. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Instead, the money will come from the fees that banks pay into the deposit insurance fund. Essentially, what's going to happen is this. You remember those 10-year security bonds that the bank invested in and they couldn't touch it for 10 years? Well, the federal government is going to allow the bank to go ahead and get those 10-year securities at full value so that they can distribute it back to their customers. Now, will this save all financial institutions affected by the situation? No, but it definitely stopped the bleeding and our financial ecosystem will remain strong. Well, that depends on what you consider a strong financial ecosystem because of fiat currency being involved in it, but that's a topic for another day. But people who were concerned about getting their paycheck will rest assured knowing they will get paid. And that, my friends, is exactly what happened to Silicon Valley Bank. My name is Jalen Truitt. This is United Financial Education. And as always, share the knowledge.